wait and for it to click. Okay, I can go now. <laughs> good morning, everyone. It is so good to be with you. Good morning, um, uh, those of you that are joining us online. I want to say to all our beautiful mothers here today, happy Mother's Day. Um, God bless you. Mothers are special, aren't they? Very special. Um, I want to ask you, little Maddie, Mackenzie's oldest daughter, was passing out these cards to women only. It's Mother's Day, guys. I'm sorry. But women only. Did all the women out there get one of these cards? If not, raise your hand, and we're going to tell you in a little bit. Do you want me to tell them now? What? Okay. Okay. Everybody got a card? Everybody got a card? I see somebody coming in. We got, they got cards. Okay. I'm going to hold up because we've got some more coming in. But anyway, what I want you to do with this card is think of just a small phrase of what, what do we say? Wait a minute. Wait, I got to check my notes. Here. <laughs> I, I want to tell you all something. And Pastor now talked about it more. I've been with my little 19-month-old grandson, who's absolutely precious, and our six-year-old granddaughter and a brand-new baby. So I've been taking care of Mama and the baby, and I've been chasing the 19-year-old, and I'm pooped. The <laughs> bottom line, 19 months. I, and, and I'm worn out. But, it w but I loved every minute of it. So bear with me today. I'm a little kind of not there. But what I'd like you to do with these cards is just write on a, short, a very short phrase how your mom has influenced your life. And then in a little bit, we're going to collect them, and we're going to try to read as many of them as we can. So don't, don't write a letter. I know it's hard not to, but just write a little phrase of how she has influenced your life the most. And I, I missed you all so much. It's so good to be back. I missed that I wasn't here for Elaine Benner's uh, funeral service. And, you know, Pastor and I both felt like we were each missing a piece of ourselves. I, I think that's the longest we've been away from each other in a long, long time outside of when I was in rehab, but he would come see me every day. And, um, man, when he jumped out of that truck Thursday afternoon, I thought he's the most good-looking thing I've seen in a long time. I was happy he was there. Uh, I want to share with you out of Romans. We're in chapter 15, verse 13. May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace as you trust in him so that you may overflow, that you may overflow with hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. Beautiful scripture. Right now, I'd like to ask Lowell if you just step forward. Lowell has something special he's going to share with us this morning. If you recognize the song, sing it with me. <clears throat> I hope. If I could be living <clears throat> when Jesus comes and would know the day and the hour, I'd love to be standing by my mother's tomb when Jesus comes in his power will be a wonderful, happy day up there on that golden strand when I can hear Jesus, my sweet Savior, say, shake hands with Mother again. I'd like to say, Mother, this is your boy you left when you went away. Now, my dear mother, it gives me great joy to see you again today. Twill be a wonderful, happy day up there on that golden strand when I can hear Jesus, my Savior, say, Shake hands with your mother again. Thank you. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lowell. That was beautiful. I'd 
ask you to stand this morning as we go to prayer. Lord Jesus, we thank you this morning for allowing us to be here once again, Father, to worship your name in this place, Father, you have designated for worship. Thank you for every person, Father, that's here this morning. Bless them. Give them a special blessing, Lord. Let them feel your love, Father. Hug them this morning. Let them feel the warmth of your presence. Let them know that you are closer, Lord, than the, than the air that they're breathing. Let them know that you are by their side, Lord. Let them know that you are with them. Because you said you will not leave us nor forsake us. And this morning, we just thank you, Lord. We thank you for your presence. Thank you for what you're going to do. Thank you for healing every mind, every body. Lord, Father, for restoring situations that seem lost. And thank you, Father, this Mother's Day that we honor every mom, Lord, for if it wasn't for moms, we wouldn't be here. So, Lord, this morning we just give you all the praise and all the glory for our moms. Bless them with health. Bless them with finances, Lord. Let them get good gifts today. Let them be blessed, feel blessed. And Lord, we just thank you for everything you're going to do. We honor your presence in this place. Holy Spirit, do as you will in this place. Touch every heart, every mind, every emotion. And Father, turn the tide, Father. Turn the tide on everything evil, Lord, that has been attacking your people, Lord. Let them experience victory this morning. In the mighty name of Jesus, we give you all the praise and glory. And the people of God said, Amen. Amen. Amen.
service this morning. Renters, we're so glad they're back with us today, and, and uh, the Lord's helping them in their recoveries, and so we give him thanks for that. As we do go to prayer today, we uh, want to be in prayer for Tom Wooston. Tom's going to be having that procedure done this Tuesday. He's been having some work done, and I and, uh, know he's not able to be with us today, but pray for him praying today, and uh, pray for him as he has this uh, procedure done this uh, this coming Tuesday and then some other things will be done after that but uh, we just need to lift him up in our prayers uh, and uh, then uh, Karen Isidore tells me her son-in-law Rob remember we were praying for him when he had his kidney transplant and he had his two year checkup on that and everything is great and so we give the Lord praise for that today and uh, you know those things can kind of be a little different so we give the Lord great praise for that today let's unite our hearts together as we go to him in prayer okay father we so thank you for this day and your goodness to us we've sung songs today about your greatness how great you are those songs Lord that uh, we realize can't even even though we sing them in words Lord, we, we just want you to know from our depths of our heart how much we praise you today, knowing that, Lord, there's no one like you. There's nothing else like you. And it amazes us still that we can come together and just and talk to you, Lord, that, that we're able to, the, I mean, the creator of the universe, the, the, the God of gods, I mean, there's, there's nothing that compares to you. And then you've made it so that we can come this morning and be able just to, to talk and pray and that's what we do lord you you want us to and you want us to bring our request to you and so we do that today lord we do it in confidence we do it today lord knowing that you hear our prayers we know that you're guiding and you're leading each one of us and so for these special needs that we pray for and people that we lift up before you um, uh, in prayer lord we believe god that you are the divine healer we believe God that you can touch those and and you can help those and Lord we never tell you when to do it or how to do it some you'll do through the medical technology that we have but all of it's done by your hand so we pray for Tom today as he faces these procedures we continue to pray for Keith today and lift him up before you Lord we give you praise today as we hear this report about Rob uh, we know how touchy those kidney transplants can be. We know that they don't always work for everybody. But we're so thankful for the good news that his, that his body has taken this kidney and it's functioning and it's working in his life. We just give you praise for that today, knowing, Lord, that you, we believe beyond any shadow of doubt that you touched his body. And we give you praise for that today. Lord, again, we thank you uh, for the mothers that are in this place today. And as we go throughout this service, 
Uh, we're reminded that uh, the mother's love for her children, it's sometimes just indescribable in the same way that your love is for us. And so we just pray today that each one today will feel honored and feel blessed as they're here in this service and uh, touch each one, we pray. Now continue to be with us. We continue to worship you and continue to praise you and give you all the glory for all things. And the people said, Amen. God bless you. You may be seated. And uh, it's so good to be together today in the house of the Lord. So great. It got hot this week a little bit, didn't it? Yeah. Hot and yeah, a little bit. And uh, so uh, that's good. Well, we're going to just kind of set up here just a, just a moment. Move some chairs forward. I'm so tired I got to sit down and preach today. You know, uh, Debbie left me over a whole week by myself almost, and uh, yeah, it was it was tough. I managed to uh, ruin the washing machine. Yeah, let's tell them that story. Let's tell them the whole story. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'll tell you, we decided that, and we've really prayed about it, that uh, since I've had so much issues uh, since the accident that I would go ahead and get my, uh, take my, re I was going to retire. I was going to retire. So um, I applied and got approved and, you know, we were kind of excited and, and I'm not getting a whole lot, but every little bit at this point in our lives is helpful with me not working for four years. He calls me up when I'm at our son's house and he says well the bad news is I ruined your washer which my washer is only about what three four years old he said but the good news is you got your first retirement check and it'll cover the cost of a new washer <laughs> I said boy you are in trouble <laughs> yeah yeah it's uh, it's sometimes you know uh, it was a bad mistake yeah but anyway all, all is well. Debbie's home and a new washer's on the way. <laughs> so yeah. she can get, she can pick right back up with her chores and I'm just going to leave them alone. That's it. You know, but there you go. And, and that was sad news when that repairman said to me, he said, it's gone. It's done. Can you believe a man could rent a washer? With a flashlight. Yeah. And uh, I don't know if I have time. I don't have time to go into the whole story. We better get going. But you'll just have to wonder about that. But my flashlight ruined the washing machine. And, and it's an amazing flashlight. Yeah. That. It was one of these flashlights has a magnet on it. And so you just attach it to everything. I just loved it. I used it on everything. I was actually going to do her thing and just kind of clean out where they put the fabric softener in and the bleach in and you put the, you know, your detergent in. And that tray pulls out and you can clean behind it. But I wanted to see a little bit more so I could clean out some of the stuff that was in there, builds up. So I put my little flashlight up in there. The end of it's magnet. Wouldn't you know that I hit the side of the washing machine. I didn't know the end was loose on that flashlight that holds the batteries in. That little end that has the magnet on it rolled down into the washing machine. Now, when it went right down where the water goes into the washing machine, where everything flows in, you know that that washing machine's a front loader. It has a steel drum in it. <laughs> so that magnet went down and attached itself to that drum. And do you know that? Then it won't turn. I tried to get the thing to turn, and then I could hear okay, it. Okay, but I tried the part that you left out that's the best part, he YouTubed how to fix this problem we were having. So they said on the YouTube, whatever you do, put a sock down in that hole so There's if some you claw, drop something yeah. in that hole, you catch it. But did he put a sock in the hole? I no. didn't know anything was going <laughs> to fall in the hole. I didn't know. Anyway. Long story short, the repairman said the thing's all sealed up, you know, because they, they, you can't get any water out. So that front loader's all sealed. The drum's all sealed inside there. And he said there's just no way to get to it unless you send the thing back to the factory and they take it apart. And Anyway, now you know the whole story. That was the rest so of the story. So that's our life story. <laughs> yeah, life happens. Anyway, hap happy Mother's Day to yes, all you. Day. And as you notice, well, it's kind of going to be a little bit different of a sermon today. But... 
Uh, should, we, should we collect our cards now? Yeah, collect the cards. Do the Can cards I get, and... Uh, my dad and Bob, would you collect all these little colored cards from the ladies in that? Yep. And did every lady get a card? Every mother, every mother, grandmother. And then write something, just a short, it has to be kind of short, because we, you know, or else we could be here a long time. Happy Mother's Day to you, by the way, Debbie. Thank you, thank and, you. Uh, I like this, because I get to sit up here and drink my coffee through the service. <laughs> this is pretty good. Yeah, there you go. I, d I don't have to stay at home and be online and be able to drink my coffee during church. I do there it. you go, you I can drink your right coffee here. right here in the service. Mike, is my next slide up? Choose to believe. Yes. Okay, we're gonna we're gonna do that in just a moment. As soon as we get the cards back up, we're gonna stand because we're still gonna do the word today, and uh, just a little differently. So, ladies are still working on on the cards a little bit. All right, let's go ahead and stand then while they're kind of finishing that. If you're if you're still finishing, you don't have to stand, but and let's hold our Bibles way up high. And let's get that on the screen there, Mike. Thank you. Here we go. I choose to believe. Ready? I, I choose, choose to believe God's word. word. I, I believe I can be what it says I can be and do what it says I can do. I get my mind and heart to receive the word of God. Let me hear you now. Amen. And again, Father, we pause. We thank you for this day. We thank you for the word of God that leads us and guides us. And as uh, as we are instructed by your word, we know how important it is uh, to have family and the mothers that instruct us as well with your word. Uh, we want to see more godly mothers. And so help, help all of us men to be godly men, that we can see godly families. That's what we're praying for in this community. Uh, thank you, Lord, for this day. We give you praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Turn around, wave at somebody around by you, and then you may be seated. And I think, is my next one the picture of the baby? It is. Okay, here it comes. Yeah. Here's, what, here, here's what Debbie's been, uh, went all the way to Jacksonville. Here it comes. Whoop. Wait for it. It's not, I'm waiting for Wait it. Wait for it. Oh, I'm back. Let me go back. What happened? There we go. Yep. Yep, there's little, that's, <laughs> that's little Axel, Axel Freeland. I call him Baby Freeland. Because that was my nickname in high school, Baby Freeland. Everybody called me Baby. My brother, my brother was older, and everyone called him Freeland. He was three years older than me because that was my granddad's name, Freeland. And so everyone called my brother Big Freeland, and they called me Baby Freeland. So I said, now I got a new Baby Freeland right here. And there he is. Pretty baby. He is, isn't he? Yeah. He, uh, um, let's see who he looks like. Anybody know who he looks like? Can you, can you get, looks like me. <laughs> <laughs> There you go. We're okay. Uh, up. But mommy oh, and baby are you. doing wonderful. Uh, the little 19-month-old, he has his moments. It's really hard for him. Mommy's been able to stay home. She hasn't had to work, so he's had her right at his beck and call. And the first day they came home with the baby, I was there alone with them while they were in the hospital, and he did pretty good. His name is Presley. I call him Little Bubba. And uh, he did pretty good Sunday and Monday. Well, Tuesday, I want to tell you, it was a rough day for little Bubba. And when little Bubba has a rough day, we all have a rough day. <laughs> but he's doing great, and he's a wonderful little toddler, and they're a beautiful little family. And then they have Chanel, who just can't keep her arms off the baby. So we're blessed. Amen. Okay. All right. Okay, Pa. All right. I've got some more cards yep. coming. Get the cards coming in here. Great. The opportunity to influence. I don't think there's anybody that can quite uh, have the opportunity that a mom has. And I think all of us share today this special day to honor, to honor moms that uh, it, it's, it, there's just no one that, you know, you're, you're, that your heart connects with. And I know dads love their children. We'll have Father's Day here next month, of course. And uh, no one, I mean, dads love their children, but I just notice over the years that a mother's love is something else. Isn't that true, Debbie? You, and you're, I, think, I see that with you and our yeah. children. Well, and I think the advantage to that is we carry that child. And, you know, we begin to connect with it. We, I remember, as all you moms do, the first time that baby kicks and moves, and you, you're not sure what it is. 
And all of a sudden, it's like a little butterfly fluttering around, and you realize, oh, that's my baby in there. But you have those months that I think we, when that baby's born, we're so in love with that baby, we can't wait. Yep. You know, and, and it's a diff little different journey those nine yeah. months for moms and dads. Yeah, because the dad's on the other side, you know, and uh, he has to take care of more things and do more things. But it's great. The joy of a mother. We talk about this and uh, that there's nothing quite like the joy of a mother. But uh, we also know that moms go through some pain to get to that joy. And Jesus described it best when he talked to the disciples. He said, a woman, when she is in labor, and we've talked extensively in services I've talked to you men about labor, you know, uh, has, has sorrow because her hour has come, but as soon as she has given birth to the child, she no longer remembers the anguish for joy, for joy that a human being has been born into the world. So uh, those of you moms here, and, and I can't speak to it, you know what I told you a few weeks ago that... Uh, you know, the closest thing that a woman can ever experience to a man having a cold <laughs> is childbirth. <laughs> I'm speechless. Yeah. <laughs> well, talk to me about that, Debbie. Just get, get, I mean, this is scripture. Do you tell me okay. if this scripture is true it or is not? It is very true. Very true. Um, I'll just tell you real quick. We talked about what we would share. Stephanie got caught in the birth canal, so that was a whole uh, tough issue there. Real hard labor all day, but she came out absolutely beautiful. With Nathaniel, uh, about four, four months into it, I went into labor and had some other issues. So I was bedridden from the fourth month on. And you know, the first when the doctor first said that, you can't get out of bed, I'm like, oh, yes, this, <laughs> yes. But I'll tell you what, after about a week, it, it was it was torture. Not only was I bedridden, but I was put on medications to stop any labor, which caused me to break out. I had terrible bumps between my toes that I would itch till they were almost draw sore. So we had a lot of problems. And the doctor said to Pastor, if you want to keep this baby, you won't let her get out of bed. And every Friday I'd go for an ultrasound. And every Friday, and I think she said it without fail, it's a miracle you've kept this baby another week. It's a miracle. Well, fast forward, Nate didn't come for a week late. He yeah. was a week. <laughs> I kept asking her every week we go to the doctor and I'd say, well, do you, you think it, you know, you think we'll go full term? And she kept saying, nope, you'll never make it. You, you, you. She said, you, if you make it another week, it's going to, and every week she said that. Finally, we got up to when he was supposed to be born. <laughs> And mind she, you, I was bedridden. I mean, yeah, people from the yep. church came in and helped he clean and cook. And Pastor did a tremendous mm -hmm. job taking care of Stephanie and me in the house. And, and, but anyway, so <laughs> time, <laughs> time came, and I went into labor, and it was rough. We yep. had a rough, rough day. And I remember, and I, I was in so much pain I couldn't even talk. But I remember I kept thinking, and I kept praying, and I thought, Tomorrow I'm going to hold this baby. Tomorrow we pushed for three hours and had an emergency C-section because we had some issues there. But was it worth it? You better believe it. He is my pride and joy, as they all are. But, yeah, Scripture is true, very yep. true. It is. It, I remember when I begged for Timmy, and I kept saying, I want to have another baby. And he's like, he, woman, you're crazy. You're crazy. <laughs> I'm like, no, I want to have another baby. I want to have another baby. You're, why would you want to have another one with everything? You, why would you want to do that? But again, the scripture is so true. And then we had our Timmy and, yep. Yep. It, 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 now you just kind of, it, it, now all the years go by, they, they grow up so quick. That's for sure. That's very sure. Okay. Well, one thing we know that a, a, a mother loves and cares for her children. And uh, we see that, you see it. And we've got some special mothers that are here today. Uh, Paul spoke to this, and he said this way, but, but we were gentle among you, and how did they learn to be gentle? Just as nursing mothers cherish her own children. And, and Paul kind of says that's how, we, that's how we're going to cherish uh, each other. And so did you have a poem to read on that? I thing? do, just yeah. something very short, A Mother's Love. 
Through the bad times and the good, she could always make me laugh. She kissed away the sorrow, and she prayed on my behalf. Only love can measure all she sacrificed for me. That's good. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Well, I think we got some moms here today. The first thing we want to do today, this is kind of a participating sermon, is we want to we want to honor the grandmas. Okay. Now, if to be a grandmother, you you probably had to be a mother first, right? And so we know we're including you in. But what I would like is for all the mothers. Grandmothers, if they would, for all the grandmothers just to come up to the front. Would you do that? Can I get you just to line up here in the front? All the grandmas. Oh, wow. Yeah, that's, that's nice. Do you got any cards to read in there? No. Okay. Oh, wow. We, yeah, we're going to have any moms left here in a minute. But uh, all, the, <laughs> all the grandmothers, yeah, here we go. Yeah, there okay. we go. Wow, look at this. Hey, give them applause. Yeah. Would you do that? All these, all these grandmothers. And uh, that is, wow. Okay, grandmas. You know, grandmas are special to me because I was raised by my grandmother. My mother passed away when I was five. And so uh, these grandmas hold a special place. I tell Debbie right now that we're the age, we're at the age right now, where my grandparents took us in, a five-year-old and an eight-year-old. Can you believe that? And I, if I think about doing that now, I appreciate my grandmother more than ever when you begin to think about that, that at that age they were willing to take on some little tykes and put up with all of our shenanigans and all that. So we thank the Lord. I think I have a special place for grandmas and grandpas too, but grandmas especially uh, for caring for us. Yeah, we want, you got some. We got one to read. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Uh, what was the? What did we tell them? About the influence the that had your mom influence you. <laughs> <laughs> the influence of your mom. Solid, faith-filled home of love. Mm, that's great. And here's another one. My mom showed me how to work hard. I didn't write that, but my mom showed me how to work hard. <laughs> Oh, Grandma. Hey, Joe and, and Miss. Oh, well, good to see you back there, Lois. We're going to make sure we. Here we go this morning. As we go, yeah, we're going to give it. I think we wanted to find out the grandmother with the, with the, who has the most great grandchildren. Great grandchildren. Anybody got any great grandchildren? Oops. Whoop, whoop. Great, great, just not great, great, great grandchildren. Okay. Great oh, grandchildren. who's got okay. the most? Who's got the most great, great grandchildren? Anybody got great, great? <gasps> Margie. Margie. <laughs> Woohoo! Okay. All right, she's the only one. Great, great. Anybody else got any great, great? All right. So let's do this. Great grandchildren. Uh, who has five great grandchildren? Five great. Great. Five great grandchildren. How many do you have? You have four. Four. How many great grandchildren you got? Or grandchildren? Ten. You have ten, ten grandchildren. Great. You have ten. ten no. Ten great grandchildren. No right. great. No, we're oh, saying great. great. She said great. You great, have great, great. great. You have ten great. <laughs> Woo! Anybody? Can anybody beat ten great grandchildren? Well, there you go. Congratulations. All right. I guess I should I think. All right. What I what I want what I want to each one to do. What's that? What? No, I'm going to give the roses. Oh, okay. <laughs> I want each grandma to get a rose here. Each okay. grandma. Each grandma. Are we, over the are, are we going to do uh, one more? Yeah, you can. Um, you who, get. Okay. Who has? And this could include you, Mackenzie. Who has the most children? Anybody here with seven children? Six children. Anybody with more than six children? There you go. Karen gets it. All right. <laughs> yeah. You're welcome. All right. What I'm going to do is I'm going to let you pick your rose out of here. Just everyone get a rose. 
And, and, we have, and before you're seated, we're going to, yeah, watch, the, there may be thorns on, there's thorns on roses. There we go. You're welcome. Now, don't go to be seated yet, because I want to say a special prayer for you. And, uh, yeah, she, You're Grandma, welcome. she's going to come up with moms. Good to see you. I don't know. Okay. Tell me why okay. Whoop, whoop, whoop. Oh, I did. Okay. Thank you. Just take a rose. There we go. This lady has six children also. Yeah, we, we, we'll get there here. Okay. Well, these are the grandmas, and grandmas, like we said, are special. And I want you, this congregation, to join with me as we pray for these ladies. Would we do that here today? Okay. And join with me. Father, how special it is to see these women that have not just been mothers, but their grandmothers as well. Some of them great-grandmothers and great-great-grandmothers. And we think they're all special. I'm praying today a pastoral prayer for them that, Lord, you bless them continually to help them as they uh, are the many times what we call the matriarchs of the family. They're that special person, that go-to person that uh, a lot of times children and grandchildren were go-to and turn to. So, Lord, I pray that you'll give them wisdom. I pray, Lord, that you'll give them uh, just uh, a, a bushel of understanding uh, as they work with their children and grandchildren. And uh, we know, we know that as they're here before me today, that they are so special. And so we thank you for each one of them, each one of their lives. And may they sense your closeness to them today, I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you, ladies. We love you, and you're such a special part of this church family. Give them a good round of applause if you'll do that today. You know, I was thinking about, as we were putting this together, my grandmother, and she was a very sweet, little, quiet woman. And I remember that I would follow her everywhere. You know, I was like her little shadow. And everywhere we went, it didn't matter if we were in the grocery store in line or if we were at the bank or if we were at home cleaning house, she would always come. And one of her favorite songs was Bringing in the Sheaves. And she'd go around the house. <laughs> and I'll never forget that. And believe it or not, I find myself doing that sometimes yep. now. Well, you're a grandma I'm now. A grandma. You're a grandma. <laughs> right. and, you know, special, special grandma. Okay. So uh, that... Uh, that is, we know that there's no one that loves like a, a mother. We also know that the mother's role as a teacher. Uh, and uh, some of our uh, grandmas and things have been school teachers, but we know that the Lord uh, blesses mothers that we learn sometimes the very first things we learn, we learn from our, our moms. Proverbs 1 8 says, My son, hear the instruction of your father. Hear instruction from your father. And do not forsake the law of your mother. <laughs> I like that verse, don't you? In other words, your mom may put some laws down, and you better not break you better not break the law, or uh, you might be you might get that. And uh, in Timothy, when I call to remembrance the genuine Paul said this to Timothy. So when I call to remembrance the genuine faith that is in you, which dwelt first in your grandmother Lois and your mother Eunice, and I am uh, persuaded, is in you. And you know, one of the instructions, uh, even back in the Old Testament, uh, was that the, the generations, as you go down through the generations, uh, that you're going to teach your children the, the, the law of the Lord. In other words, you're going to have them learn the things about God. And so, what a special place that moms and grandmothers have in our lives to really help us understand the Word of God. And so Paul's commending Timothy here. He's, in other words, he said, you had a good grandmother, Lois. And uh, that was my grandmother's name, by the way, isn't it? Some, and my, my mother's name was Ena Mae, so it's not Eunice, but it begins with an E. Uh, so I kind of... I kind of like the book of Timothy, you know, but uh, I can I can certainly say that's true, that um, a mother uh, is a great teacher, and we learn the first from. You got any more to read there? Some things about moms? Yeah, here's one. Uh, my mother taught me to always forgive and love 
and I love this, in parentheses, mostly with food. <laughs> I love that. So my mother always taught me to always forgive. And that love. must be somebody in the granny squares. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> and then mom guided me in raising and loving my children, the true gifts my heavenly father gave me. Her advice was amazing um, to this young single parent. Okay, so you want me to yep. do one more? No, nope. uh, uh, yeah, you can do one more. Here's a, here's a good one. Told me about Jesus. Yeah. Isn't that great? So it's good. Yeah. What we'd like now is just all the rest of the moms. You're not a grandma, but you're a mother. If oh, wait, you, wait, well, wait, wait. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah. yeah you yeah. tell me next. I'm sorry. Yeah. I, got, I jumped ahead. You're way wait. ahead of my notes, sir. <laughs> <laughs> well, one thing we were going to talk about is how a mother really teaches her children. And I can't take all the credit for this. This was corporate. But when Timmy was just a little tiny oh, yeah. guy, how old was Timmy? Maybe four? Four or five, yeah. And um, we were pastoring in Whitehall up in Ohio. And one of the ladies in our church just thought he was the cutest thing ever. So every Sunday she and he started. he was. He was cute. He was, yeah. She gave him a dollar bill after church. So when he'd come home, he'd show his dad, and he'd be all excited. He had this dollar bill. So his dad sat down, and, and we've always tithed, so this is where I get a little credit, but. Yeah. And um, his dad sat down with him, and he took 10 dimes. And he said, okay, these 10 dimes, right, 10 dimes? These 10 dimes equal this dollar. So what, what you need to do, Timmy, is you need to take one of these dimes every week. I'll give you 10 dimes for your dollar. And every week you take a dime and you put it in the offering plate. Well, Timmy did it, and his dad taught him. And how I to told him to put a put it in an envelope with his name on it as well, because right. I said you you know you want to learn how to use a tithing envelope. So yeah, so he did that for about a year, and she was she was very faithful in giving him this dollar. Well, she was one of our counters, and she saw that every week, without fail, Timmy would put that ten cents in the offering plate. Well, what do you know? She turned around and started giving him a $5 bill. She told his dad, if he's going to be that good of a tither, I'm raising his paycheck. <laughs> and so she, she gave him, started giving him a $5 bill. From that moment on, as a little, little boy, Timmy has always tithed. And I want to tell you, God blesses tithing. Mm. Timmy has been blessed. We had a neighbor friend, and Timmy was always a good boy, such a good little neighborhood boy, and always compassionate. You know, every child, I always say about Steph, Steph is very strong. She's a very strong woman. She's had to endure a lot, a lot of challenges in her life, and she's really been strong and overcomer. And, and Nate, I always say Nate's unique. Nate is very unique. You spend 15 minutes with Nate, you're going to say, yeah, Nate's very unique. Right, Mackenzie? He's very unique. Timmy's very compassionate. And I believe that God has really blessed him for his tithing. Because at one point, how old was he? A neighbor bought him. I don't know how much they cost, but bought him a cycling bike, a very expensive. It was eleven hundred dollars okay, for the bicycle. Yeah, just because this, he was this, such a good. <laughs> yeah, this neighbor man wanted somebody to ride with him. Timmy said, "Well, I'd ride with you if I had a bike." And he was about sixteen then, or something. And so. that's all he said. I that's mean, all he, he said. didn't try it's, to get it. If bike, I had a bike, I'd I'd ride with you. Next thing you know, there set that bike in the driveway. A man went and bought it, and Timmy was faithful. He rode with him yeah. too. He'd, he'd go and ride. then we fast forward to when Timmy was in high school, and 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 we couldn't afford to buy him a car, and and we were kind of trying. We were all going different directions. Uh, directions and trying to juggle all that. And one day we got a call, and a gentleman told uh, Pastor, he said, "I'm going to give Timmy a truck." And he said, you meet us at the Department of Transportation. It wasn't a new truck by any means, a little old Ford Ranger. And Timmy has driven that until about two months ago. Two months ago. He just sold it. And he sold, sold it, it for $2,500. So. Yeah. <laughs> but, he, you know, when a lot of young people, to get that craving to get a new car, he was so thankful for that truck. And it was you know, it was a little bit of a, it was a good truck. I was going to say, it was a pretty good truck. Yeah, yeah. But, and I, uh, I really honestly believe to this day that Timmy has been so blessed by God because he's been so faithful in not just his time. Generosity, but, but uh, just And he's been generous, spirit. he's been generous. I remember when um, we first went to our church in, um, in um, Largo, and um, Timmy was about how old then? Maybe fourth grade, you said? Yeah, fourth grade. And I remember he came home from school one day, and he was telling me all about this, this little boy. And, and I didn't know at the time, but this little boy had some special needs. And he said, you know what, Mom? 
I am going to be his friend. And I have to say that's when I had a real proud mom moment, that my child would pick out the ones that needed friends and be their friends. So anyway, okay, moving right along. <laughs> yeah. Okay. What's next on my notes there? I don't oh, know. Oh, okay, Mother's Prayer. Before you, cl before you close your eyes to sleep, I have a promise still to keep. As I hold you in my arms, I pray your little frame goes strong and that faith takes hold while you are young. This is my prayer for you. Hold my hand, I'll teach you the way to go through the joys, through the tears, the journey of these years. May you trust in him till the end. Mm -hmm. Amen. Okay. Beautiful. Isn't that beautiful? Now the mothers. Well, moms are special. Now the mothers. Now it's time for the, you're not a grandma, but you're a mom. We the rest of our moms. Mackenzie, yeah, that's good. We got any other moms in here? Wow. Everybody else was a grandma, huh? All right. Come on up, honey. Don't be shy. <laughs> Don't be shy. <laughs> yeah. We're so proud of you. We're so proud of bringing your babies to church and, and singing on the praise team. And I mean, look around. There's not many youth here, and we're very, very proud of what you're teaching and instilling in your little family. Beautiful, beautiful family. <laughs> you're a beautiful young woman, and we love you. You are, yeah. So you can see we got work to do, right? We got to get some more young mothers in here. And I would say that you're probably the mom with the most children, the newest children here today. <laughs> Take your pick, honey, of one of those plants. Yeah, we, these are don't we these love are rose Mackenzie? plants. What, don't we just love Wait a minute, her? Mackenzie. We're gonna give you a rose as well. And you pick which one of those you want out of there. And give her one for her mom. Oh Karina. yeah, we and Karina. We need the Karina. She's doing grandma she, duty, yeah, right? Karina's, Karina's doing grandma in children's duty. Church. Yep, yep. So, Very wait nice. a minute, Mackenzie, we're going to pray for you. We want you to come back up here. And uh, would you all join me as we pray for, for her today? Let's do that. Father, how thankful we are today for Mackenzie and uh, being representing the moms here today. And Lord, we just pray that uh, blessings on her life. What a big help she is to us here and her faithfulness to the church and the different areas in which she serves. And uh, so today, Lord, I just pray for her and her family. What precious children she has. And I just pray today, Lord, that uh, uh, her family, I pray for her, her and Andrew. I just pray, God, that uh, uh, as you bless their home, and uh, they're mindful of your goodness. We're just praying that, uh, uh, for, again, just lifting Andrew up before you today. And uh, trust, Lord, as we put him in your hands, that you will help him as he will guide and lead his family. Now, Lord, uh, bless Mackenzie now. And um, as we eat at church, honor her today. Uh, we we're reminded how many more young mothers we need in this church. And we know we have several, but uh, Mackenzie's here today, and we thank you for her, and we give praise to the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. God bless you, Mackenzie. We do love you. And, uh, and, and we have a lot more young moms. I don't know. You know, this COVID thing, we were, the nursery was getting, yeah. I mean, our nursery, uh, you know, there last year, but pre-COVID, we were... And we're missing some moms like Awilda and yeah. Dina and Betsy. And then we've got moms at home, Dorothy, Carol Donahoe. We know we have a lot of moms at home that aren't. I know. I don't know, I don't know ladies, you watch at home. I don't know how we're going to get the roses to you. We just can't put them through the, we can't put them through the TV. That's for sure. But anyway, you come by the church. We're going to keep them here. If you can come by the church Tuesday or so, we'll try to keep these roses alive. Maybe you can. Come by and get your come by and get your rose. Okay. Now the one thing mothers have to do is mothers have to discipline their children. <laughs> Every night. Have you ever got any discipline from your mother? Yep, just about. Well, we know that. Here's what the Bible says about it. It said the rod uh, and rebuke, the rod and rebuke give wisdom. Boy, it doesn't feel like that at the time, does it, when you're on that end of the receiving end. But a child left to himself brings shame to his mother. And, uh, you know, that's such a good principle to learn uh, because now we kind of live in a day where, you know, someone believes, oh, you just let a kid do whatever it wants. But the Scripture holds up true that, uh, you know, you've got to, you, you got to instruct a child. And the greatest 
uh, thing that can happen is that a person know how to, if you never know how to receive instructions, you won't know how, to, if you don't know how to receive it, you'll never know how to give it. And so when a, when a child, if a child never learns to receive or to have instruction, they'll never know how to give or to instruct others. And so uh, it can just, it can be a, a thing. But every once in a while, you, you know, you probably got disciplined a lot as a child. Oh, yeah? I did. That's why I'm so good today. <laughs> <laughs> I did. I mean, you know, yeah. we would, uh, I got spanked uh, a few times. Yes, I did. You know I did. But... But not, but not much. I don't remember. Uh, what I do remember the most, believe it or not, is in church. And if me and my brother started to act up, we got pinched. Yeah. Well, there yeah. you go. Pinched in the leg, pinched on the ear. You wanted you know. to go to jail now, or you wanted to? <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> but no, we were, and our and our discipline was out of love. And you and you realize that when you become a parent, that that's out of love. That you know a child. That's right. So, so grandmas and moms keep on using that rod. I got, I got a good one here. Okay. Um, taught me what is right and wrong and I better do it. <laughs> I guess right with that one. <laughs> yep, we're with you. Okay. She didn't just love me, she showed her love. My mother blessed her Christian life and love and teaching. Beautiful mother. Okay. Okay. Yeah. And there we go as we kind of wrap things up here today. Uh, a mother of great character. And, uh, you know, uh, again, we look up to different people as our kind of things. But any, anytime you almost hear anybody talk about praying somebody, they really talk about, you, even if you listen, these guys are in sports or whatever, they'll often talk about their moms. You know, their mom was a hard worker, their mom. Mm -hmm did this it was the mom that held that special place we know and we're here today as dads and husbands uh, to salute our our moms and the women in our in our lives and uh, you know you, you can't you can't get along without them right yeah some men <laughs> better say amen in here I kind of was I was kind of feeding you we can't get along without these ladies in our lives isn't that the truth and uh, here's, you got, why don't you read a couple more because I'm going to wrap up with this scripture that I'm going to read here today. Okay. This is a little bit longer than one phrase, but it's very nice. My mother had five children by the time she was 23 years old. She worked so hard in raising all of us. Even though she was not a Christian until many years later, she taught us to love and respect each other. And I saw much patience she had. I'm very blessed to still have her today on Mother's Day. Um, my mother was a loving, supporting mother and gave me a spiritual foundation, taking me to church as a baby and supported my going to the mission field. So we gave you a little clue who that was from. My mom instilled in me and my sister the self-respect and good morals are most important. That's good. You want to keep going? Yeah, go ahead. Okay. Read as many as My you can. My mom's or... love, loving me, great to be together, loving the Lord. These are all what, how their mom influenced. My mother taught me about Jesus and showed me how to follow him. And we're getting that a lot, aren't we? Mom's love and giving for family, loving God, loving family, loving others. Remind her as Proverbs 31, women and saying we must forgive and be thankful, God, for what he has done. My mother was elderly when she found the Lord. There was a complete change in her and her life. She was then such a sweet Christian witness. My mother taught me to love God and, and, our, father, and our Father in heaven. She also said to help Oh, to help our neighbor, and she taught me to help others. I'm sorry. My mom influenced my life through prayer and devotion to the Lord. I pray I will do the same. 
to my children. There you go. That, great. That was you guys, and that that's those right. are all beautiful in yeah. honor of the of the moms here today. This scripture, of course, found in Proverbs, kind of, we use it often, especially on Mother's Day, but it kind of wraps it up. Who can find a virtuous wife? For her worth is far above uh, rubies. The heart of her husband safely trusts her, so he will have no lack of gain. She does him good and not evil all the days of her life. She seeks wool and flax and willingly works with her hands. She is like the merchant ships. She brings her food from afar. She also rises while it is yet night and provides food for her household and a portion for her maid servants. She considers a field and buys it. From her profit, she plants a vineyard. She girds herself with strength and strengthens her arms. She perceives that her merchandise is good and her lamp does not go out by night. She stretches out her hands to the distance and her, and her hand holds the spindle. She extends her hand to the poor. Yes, she reaches out her hands to the needy. She is not afraid of snow for her household, for all her household is clothed uh, with scarlet. She makes tapestry for herself. Her clothing is fine linen and purple. Her husband is known in the gates and when he sits among the elders of the land. She makes uh, linen garments and sells them and supplies sashes for the merchants. Strength and honor are her clothing. She shall rejoice in time to come. She opens her mouth with wisdom, and all her tongue is the law of kindness. She watches over the ways of the household and does not eat the bread of idleness. Her children rise up and call her blessed. And boy, they should. Did you hear all that description? Her husband also, and he praises her. Many daughters have done well, but you excel them all. Charm is deceitful, and beauty is, pa is passing, but a woman who fears the Lord, she shall be praised. Give her of the fruit of her hands, and let her own works praise her in the gates. Amen. And uh, that's, a, that's quite a description, and I think that many of you uh, have kind of fit that mold. Many of the little ladies here, and I can say that about Debbie. You know, I used to say, now she's kind of slowed down since her accident a little bit, but usually from the time her feet hit the floor to the time she went to bed at night, this lady never stopped moving. I'm telling you, she was working, working all the time, taking care of the family. So, I loved every minute of it. Yeah. I think that's the other thing about all of you wonderful, beautiful moms out there. It, it's it's such an honor to be a mom, isn't it? When you when God is in the center of your life and in your home, you don't you don't just see that child as a child, but you see it as a true gift from God. And it's such a privilege and such an honor to be able to raise that child. I got some beautiful mother's wishes this morning, and I got you know wishes like. You know, I'm so proud you're my mom, but I send back, I'm so proud you're my child. I'm so blessed and so honored. Um, here's a little reading, A Mother to be Praised. If you find someone who teaches her child the ways of Christ, who shows how far love reaches and that it doesn't have a price, if you find someone who reveals the heart of God with each new day, then you've found a mother to be praised. If, you, if someone instills in her small child that salvation makes you free, if she knows that she can love them best by praying on her knees, if she intercedes on their behalf to God with each new day, then she is a mother to be praised. Amen. Okay. Well, I think that rings true with a, a lot of the ladies that are here today. Let's give them another round of applause. Would you do that? All you men. And me. Thank you, moms. And you know that uh, throughout those cards, the one thing I noticed that everybody talked about is that the moms talk to him about Jesus. And as we're going to close out in a song here, and you're going to play that, right? Hey, did you see those two little plants? Oh, yes, that's right. These two plants are for somebody special. That's right, before we do this. Well, everybody's special. Everybody is special. But uh, we've got two plants here, and 
One is four. Cynthia. Whoa, where's Cynthia? That's you hold your Cynthia? Cynthia, we want you to come forward. Cynthia has served uh, as a as a mission field, and uh, and so in many ways uh, she has not been a a mother as far as giving birth. But I'm sure as you have taught children over the years, you have been like a mother figure to many. And so we had we wanted to Thank give you. you one of those special plants. As and those students are uh, give me a microphone. Oh yeah, yeah. Some of, yeah, some of the students now are grandmothers. Okay. Okay. And you have one more. Okay. We want you, uh, Carolyn. Miss Carolyn, I want you. To, yes, we have a special plant we want to give you. Carolyn also served as a missionary. I know I'm probably messing the camera all up here. James, you able to, yeah. And we just wanted to give one of these to you too, because we know that serving on the mission field, that uh, there's a lot of children out there. And I know you have uh, uh, given your life to the work of the Lord for that. And so we just wanted to thank you for that and thank give you, you that. And then I know, I know we have one here today that is a mom, a stepmom. Is there any of you that are moms by being a stepmom? Well, if you've had your own children, is there any of you that have not had your own children but are a mom by being a stepmom? Connie and Connie, come on up. Okay. Did I say that right? Okay. So you get another rose. I don't have any more plants. We don't want anybody to feel left out. Being a stepmom, I'm sure, can be a beautiful thing, but it can probably be a very challenging <laughs> thing. And we I want you to. I'm a bonus a, bo a bonus mom. Did you hear mom. what Connie said? She said she's been told she's a bonus mom. What a, ni what a nice way. God bless. Let me give you both a hug. We love women who will step up in that tough position and love a child that Thank you. they have not given birth to. God bless you. By having a baby born on my birthday. Oh, April 30th? Excellent. Axel was born. Oh, well, he's going to be There special. you go. Okay. You will. You will. Let's, Pastor's going to say a special yep, prayer. Yep, going to say a prayer. Uh, Mike, was there somebody else? That... Okay, let's pray. I'm going to pray for these ladies. Father, we thank you for these special ladies. Call them bonus moms. I think that's pretty neat. Uh, they that have been step uh, mothers to their children. We know. We know the children love them. And we just pray a special blessing on them and their families today and those uh, children that they have uh, that they t t took in and raised as their own. And uh, we know how special that is. So we just pray a, sp a special blessing on their lives today. And um, may, as they continue to serve and love you, uh, may they just sense your presence in a wonderful way. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Let me just say, Connie, you take another one. I know you have two stepchildren. Take another rose. Connie, how many did you have? Two. Take another rose. Those All are right. How, how neat. And they're both named Connie and they're both bonus moms. One, <laughs> wonderful. That's good. Okay. All right. Now we're ready to close out and sing. Yeah. Did no, I don't know. He better send me a note. I can't. I, I'd rather try to tell me something from the back. But. Okay. All right. Anyway, this song is something that probably all moms sung to their children. Right? Would you stand with me? And we're going to sing this in, in closing today uh, in honor of moms because uh, I just know that as uh, you probably rocked your children or held them at some time, you probably whispered this song in their ear. And uh, I know my mom did to me. And so. Uh, here we go. Let's sing this together. Ready? Jesus loves me, this I know, for the Bible tells me so. Little ones to Him belong. They are weak, but Love. 
godly mothers. Amen. Amen. Let's pray together. Father, again, we close out now in prayer with this day. It is, uh, we've done our best to honor the moms that are here today. Uh, Lord, we're just mindful of the fact how much you love us. And that love many times has shown through, uh, through the love of mothers and concern and care. Moms that have been our Sunday school teachers. Uh, they've been our uh, teachers in school they've served in different capacities in our lives that have influenced us uh, so much in a positive way and so God we're thankful for that today again uh, as we'll go from this place today uh, keep us close to you keep us in the center of your will with every step we take help us to be in step with you with every beat of our heart help our lives and our spirits to be in tune with you and may we live out our lives that will bring glory and honor to Jesus. And we pray this today in your precious and holy name. Again, the people said amen. Amen. God bless you. Have a great rest of the day today. We love you. Thank you, those of you who have been watching online with us. God bless you. Happy Mother's Day as well. And seriously, the roses on the left, we're going to put them in the, in the office here. If you want to come by the church and pick one up, you may do so. God bless you. Have a wonderful day. Love you.